This video is about Newton's method for finding the zeros of a function f of x. In other words, the values of x that make f of x equal to zero. The zeros of a function can also be thought of as the x-intercepts of its graph. Suppose we want to find a solution to the equation e to the x equals 4x. This equation cannot be solved using standard algebraic methods. For example, taking the ln of both sides doesn't really help because we still get x equals ln of 4x, which is just as hard to solve. Instead, we can look for approximate solutions. Looking at the graph of y equals e to the x and y equals 4x, we see there should be two solutions, one at approximately x equals little more than 2, and the other around x equals maybe 0.3 or 0.4. Newton's method will allow us to make much more accurate approximations to the solution of this equation than we can do by just glancing at the graph. To use Newton's method, instead of looking at the equation e to the x equals 4x, we'll look at the equation e to the x minus 4x equals 0. And in fact, we'll define the function f of x to be e to the x minus 4x and look for zeros of that function. After all, finding a zero of this function is the same as finding a solution to our original equation. So now we're trying to solve the equivalent problem of finding the zero of the function f of x equals e to the x minus 4x. That's the function that's drawn below. I'm going to focus on this zero, the one near 2, and I'm just going to make an initial guess. Anything reasonably close to the actual zero should do, so I'll just put an initial guess right here and I'll call it x1. Now x1 is not actually a zero of my function, and I'll write the point on the graph above it as x1 f of x1. To get a better estimate for the zero of my function, I'm going to make use of the tangent line to my function that goes through this point. So the second step will be to find this tangent line. Since the tangent line is a reasonably good approximation to the function, the point where the tangent line crosses the x-axis should be closer to the point where the function itself crosses the x-axis, which is the point I'm looking for. So the third step will be to find the x-intercept for the tangent line. I'll call this x-intercept x2. Now I'm just going to repeat this process. I'll use x2 as my next guess. I'll follow it up to the function where I have the point x2 f of x2 and then I'll draw a new tangent line and get a new intercept I can repeat this process as often as I need to to get a sufficiently accurate approximation to my actual zero of my function. Now that I've described the process graphically, let's find some equations that go along with this picture. If I start with the initial guess of x1, then the tangent line through x1 f of x1 is given by the equation y equals f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times x minus x1. You might remember this equation from the section on linearization, and it really just comes from the formula y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 that holds for any line, where m here is the derivative at x1, and y1 is f of x1. Plugging into that equation, we have y minus f of x1 equals f prime of x1 times x minus x1, which simplifies to y equals f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times x minus x1. So that's where this linearization equation comes from. It's just the equation of the tangent line. Now, if we want to find the x-intercept of the tangent line, we just set the tangent line equation equal to zero, so we have zero equals f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times x minus x1, and we solve for x. 
So we can subtract f of x1 from each side, divide by f prime of x1, and solve for x. We're calling this new x-intercept x2. So x2 is x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. Now we have our second guess, x2, and we can again find the tangent line through x2, f of x2. That tangent line will be given by the same sort of equation. And if we then find the x-intercept, the same algebraic steps get us to the analogous equation x3 equals x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. And more generally, as we repeat this process over and over again, our n plus 1th guess is going to be given by xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. That's the j equation at the core of Newton's method. Now that we've got the theory down, let's grind through the problem at hand with some numbers. Our function has the equation f of x equals e to the x minus 4x, so f prime of x is e to the x minus 4. So from Newton's method's equation, we have in general, x sub n plus 1 is x sub n minus e to the x sub n minus 4 times x sub n over e to the x sub n minus 4. Let's start with, for example, x sub 1 equals 3. Then x sub 2 is going to be 3 minus e cubed minus 4 times 3 over e cubed minus 4. Plugging this into a calculator, I get x sub 2 equals 2.4973, and so on. Now to cube, compute x sub 3, I have to take this whole number and plug that in to my formula. I've written it out as just 2.49, but for accuracy, when I actually compute it in my calculator, I'll use the entire number. My calculator gives me this answer for x sub 3. And continuing this process, I can get x sub 4, x sub 5, and x sub 6. If I compute one more, x sub 7, I notice that I have no change to my value in the number of digits that the calculator spits out. So at this point, my Newton's method's iterations have converged, and I have an answer that's accurate to about eight decimal places. I found one zero for my function, and if I wanted to find the second zero, the one over here, I would just need to start with an initial value that's close to this x-coordinate. Perhaps an initial value of zero might be good. In this video, we developed an algorithm for getting increasingly accurate approximations to the zero of a function. The central equation that we used was this one, which tells us how to get from one approximation, x sub n, to the next one, x sub n plus 1.